Across the country, New York, especially metropolitan area, known as the great liberal bastion, leaning further left on more issues than just about anywhere else in the country, which is why we're sometimes surprised when issues pop up where a region, and for that matter, state or anything but liberal, for example, when we discovered New York City arrests more people for marijuana possession than any other city in the world. It's a trend that even continued with Bill de Blasio as mayor, as we talked about in this program. How about Stop and Frisk, popular program that has police stopping people, mostly minorities, without any suspicion they may have committed a crime. Now tonight, we have found another example. That is how we treat teenagers. We treat them like adults in New York's criminal justice system, and it turns out that only two states in the nation, North Carolina and New York, automatically treat 16 and 17-year-old defendants as adults in every case, giving them adult-length prison sentences and housing them in adult prisons like Rikers Island. But now, there's a new push to change those laws and remove 16 and 17 year olds from the adult justice system. And the leading proponent of that change just happens to be the top judge in the whole state of New York. And he spoke with our own Andrew Whitman this morning. And Rich, again, it's important to note that we're talking about all 16 and 17 year olds here. Certainly there will always be cases where somebody does a, an act that's so depraved that they then get tried as an adult. But New York refers to all 16 and 17 year olds as adults. And not only does New York State Chief Judge Jonathan Lippman want to see that system change, he refers to teenagers tried and sentenced as adults as victims. We talked about that and more when we met in Rye, New York this morning. Judge Lippman, your focus today was raise the age of criminal responsibility. What does that mean and why, are, why is it so important to you and to the state? Well, what it means is that today uh, children, and they are children who are 16 and 17 years old, are treated in the adult criminal justice system in New York. And we are only two states in the country, one of two states in the country, that still treat 16 and 17 years old uh, uh, children as adult criminals. And it's important that we change it because it's ruin, ruining these kids' lives. It's, it's taking uh, children whose brain development is not uh, as mature as an adult, and they do stupid things and silly things that get their parents upset, but they should be treated as kids and not as criminals. And if we don't do this, we're ruining these kids' lives before they can become a part of the American dream. This conversation today was framed in terms of a stand against racism. It, are you suggesting there is a race, racial component to the damage done by prosecuting 16 and 17 year olds as adults? Well, there's certainly a connection in that the vast majority of the 16 and 17 year olds who are prosecuted as adults are uh, black and Hispanic, and overwhelmingly so. So clearly, there's a disparate impact on uh, uh, children of color than on others. And that's the connection between the stand against racism and, uh, and the raising the age movement. These 16 and 17 year olds are criminally accused, uh, stand accused of, of committing criminal acts. You describe them today as victims. How, how are they victims and how do they get victimized by the system? Because most of them are overwhelmingly, these are nonviolent crimes, uh, not, you know, something that, that society should seek uh, uh, retribution and punishment about. These kids need help. And by not giving them help and instead focusing on punitive measures, we victimize them. We make them or they become adult criminals. Instead of becoming kids who did something that maybe wasn't so smart, get them whatever help they need, get them on the right path, emphasize services, not punishment. And this comes from the justice system and the chief judge of the state. Our laws don't make any sense in this regard. It, it sounds like you're, you're suggesting that the focus of prisons that we forget about is corrections and that these are kids who really can be corrected or can benefit from corrections. Not only can they be corrected, most of overwhelmingly uh, uh, incarceration should be the last resort. These are children who need a helping hand in combination with their parents, with uh, service providers, who can help them to live good lives. They're not criminals. But what we're doing is we're victimizing them. We're getting them the adult criminal justice system. Even worse, we're incarcerating them. It just doesn't make sense for the future of our greatest resource, our children, or for the future of our society. It's counterproductive. Judge, you know there are going to be critics and there are going to be cynics who hear what you're saying and say, well, 
you're just allowing 16 and 17 year olds to game the system or to commit violent crimes and get away with it or somehow get a slap on the wrist as a result. I is that the, the end result here? Is that what no, happened? I think it I think it's just the opposite. Again, most of the crimes that these kids commit are not violent by any stretch of the imagination. And what you're doing is by em emphasizing punishment instead of rehabilitation, you're hurting them for the rest of their lives. You're giving them a criminal record. You're stigmatizing them. And then they become adult criminals. My view is public safety is not served by treating kids as adult criminals. We should treat them as kids. And this is not being soft or tough on crime. This is being smart on crime with children who are not hardened criminals. They, they're, the science tells us that their brain development is not as mature as adults. They don't weigh risks and consequences the way you and I do. And you're not suggesting that 16 and 17 year old defendants, if convicted, don't serve prison time or anything like that. There are still significant penalties there, for, for... There will be cases, and the, the very, very, very small minority of cases where it may be in the ne necessary to incarcerate a child. And in, in that rare situation, and it really, the overwhelming bulk of these uh, 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 charges against kids don't require that. But where you do, they shouldn't be in adult criminal facilities where they're victimized again. And they should have separate facilities. And our history in New York is our juvenile facilities are terrible also. We've got to upgrade those, but when you do have to incarcerate a child, which is, again, really a very, very unlikely event, it should be done with some sense of who they are and not mixing them with the adult criminal populations. Finally, Judge, you said that New York is one of just two states that actually prosecute 16-year-olds as adults uniformly, uh, North Carolina being the other one. How did that happen? How did New York wind up in such a category? It is a over 50-year process. When this was done in 1962, when the Family Court Act went into uh, effect, and we said it's a temporary measure that we're going to treat the age of criminal responsibility as 16. Even at that time, there was a movement to raise it. But they said, OK, let's set it here, and then we'll study it. And they studied it and studied it. And 15 years later, we're still studying it. The bright spot is that Governor Cuomo has appointed a commission that's going to come back with a report before the end of the year that's supposed to figure out how we can get to changing the age of criminal responsibility, not if we should do it, but what's the, the framework that it should look like. So I think that's a very bright spot. We've had uh, legislation pending in the legislature for the last three years, uh, a bill to, age the, uh, to raise the age of criminal responsibility. But I think it's so important, and, uh, and I want to uh, in every way praise Governor Cuomo for putting together this commission because his support, I believe, will make this happen. It is crucial to make it happening. So I'm really so, so pleased and so supportive that the governor has done this. And after the commission comes back, the legislature still has to get involved, still has to vote? The, the commissioner will have to vote. We need uh, people of goodwill who recognize the importance of this issue to be speaking out and, uh, and really uh, rallying support uh, with the legislature to make this happen and get a bill that, while we can debate uh, pieces of it, get a bill that can, in essence, raise the age of criminal responsibility in New York to 18. Uh, to, uh, to 18. Judge Lippman, thanks very much. Best of luck. Oh, thank you. Pleasure to see you. And tomorrow night, we're going to speak with one of the organizers of today's event, who's at the center of the push to raise the age, our friend Mayo Bartlett, an attorney and former chief of the Bias Crimes Unit at the Westchester County District Attorney's Office. He will be on our legal panel, as he usually is tomorrow night, to bring us more on this effort. Rich? It's a fascinating subject. I know you guys um, have very strong opinions on it. I wish we had more time on it. You also treat some of these kids as well here. Um, they, it's, a, it's a big boy place, Rikers, and maybe that's not the best place for 16 and 17-year-olds, at least not all of them. Okay. We come back, we'll make a, take a quick look at news, make it headlines around the valley. Stay with us.